Hello and welcome to Catalyze Music Academy. My name is Zach Christopher. I'm an Ableton certified trainer. And today I want to talk about what I think is probably one of the best Max for Live devices out there, which is the Euclidean Sequencer by Alchemin. I know a little while back I made another video on Shaper and I called that my favorite Max for Live device, but I think I've changed my mind. I think this one really stands out as just being the best Max for Live device that I can find currently. I use it all the time. Really useful for just generating percussion, melodies, arpeggiations, all kinds of content. It works great, it's really easy to use, and most importantly, it is fun to use. Uh, so before we dive too deep into it, I do wanna let you know that if you are enjoying the content on the channel, uh, please feel free to subscribe, like, comment, all that kind of stuff. It does really help me out. Uh, at the time of recording this, I am getting pretty close to hitting 2,000 subscribers, so that means a lot to me, and I really appreciate all your support. So uh, let's go ahead and dive into this as I mentioned earlier, this is made by a guy named Alkman. I will put the link to purchase it below. I think that it is totally worth it. I think I paid like 19 euros or something for it. Very affordable. Definitely going to recommend checking this out for reasons that you will hopefully see in this video. So we're going to start off by talking a little bit about what a Euclidean sequencer is, how it works, and then I'm going to go over a lot of the specifics of why I really like the sequencer and how you can use it to just generate lots and lots of cool notes. So first off, uh, this is a MIDI effect, so I didn't, and it just generates to a MIDI. So I don't need to input any MIDI, I don't need to play anything, it's just going to do everything by itself. And you'll notice that over here we have four different sequences, A, B, C, and D, which we can turn on and off independently. But for right now, we're just going to start with A, and then we start adding in more in as we go along. So the way a Euclidean sequencer works is you have a set number of steps, and then a number of events that take place within those steps. Right now we just have one event within eight steps. So if I hit play, you're just going to hear one note, and then each one of these gray dots represents a step. Like that. Now the, what makes it a Euclidean sequencer is that as I add more events, it's going to try to evenly space those events as much as possible. So if I move this around to start adding more events, we now have two evenly spaced events, or three evenly spaced events, or four of them, or five of them. Etc. Uh, you'll notice that if you have something like this, where I have like five steps or five events in eight steps, it's not possible to exactly even the space in them out, so it tries to as much as possible. On top of that, we can also adjust the rotation. So when I hit play, it's going to start at 12 o'clock here and just go around clockwise. Uh, but if I hit the rotation, it's going to move these steps over clockwise by one. So this event is going to go here, this one's going to go here, that one's going to go there, etc. So if I do this, it just changes where you're starting within the circle. So you can rotate it around, you can just number of steps and the or number of events and number of steps all independently. So you can do some really cool patterns like five step or five events in nine steps. Like that. On top of that, we can also do things over here. We can um, like change the speed, we can half time it or double time it, things like that. Uh, as of right now, this is only sending out one MIDI note, which is the MIDI note C3 into your, your instrument, whether it's a drum rack or an instrument, whatever you want. Uh, and we can also change the order in which it spins around, or the direction in which it spins around. So right now it's going clockwise. If I hit this one, it's going to go counterclockwise. This one is going to go backwards and forwards, so it'll start going one direction and then bounce backwards and forwards. And then here it's going to shift randomly. It's going to kind of like sometimes it'll go forwards, sometimes it'll go backwards. So pretty basic controls there that are pretty useful. Um, however, this gets a lot more interesting once we get multiple sequences involved. So if I turn this one on, right now we have 10 steps and we have one event to nine steps with five events inside of it. That. So if I start adding more events here, They're not always going to be on time with each other, which is what I really like about this. You get these nice kind of polyrhythmic, polymetered kind of sounds. And then again, all right, now we have all these controls here. We can change the speed. We can change whatever notes coming out of it. Um, and we can just things like rotation. You get some cool, interesting, different kind of melody arpeggiation kind of thing that's going on. Let's get C involved here as well, and we will Turn this up. We'll do four elevenths. And you'll notice that the more steps that you have, the longer it takes to go around the circle. So you're going to see the yellow 
uh, clock hand here is going to move, be moving slower than the green or the blue because this one has 11 steps, this one has 7, this one has 9. If you want to, you can hit the resync button over here, and that will move everything back to 12 o'clock. Um, and that is quantized, so it's going to wait to the next bar or whatever to do that. Uh, we can also do our things over here to kind of like globally change with our speed. We could have this be in 16th notes or 8th notes. Um, we can have this be in hertz. So if you just want this to be totally unsynced from the grid, you can have this in hertz and change the speed in hertz. Or we can use a triplet grid down here. So those are three options for changing the speeds that are all pretty handy. And then up here, we have the polymeter button versus the polyrhythm button. And this is a really important distinction that will greatly affect the sound and how this is going to play. So if we are in polymeter, as I mentioned earlier, the speed of each one of these clock hands is moving independently. The more steps, the longer it takes. If we switch to polyrhythm, check out what happens. All of the clocks, all of the hands move at the same speed. We still have evenly spaced events within a set number of steps, but the clocks are all moving at the same time. the speed here. Uh, we can also do things like offset still. If you like do things like change the number of steps, they're all, in this case, they're independent of each other, but they're all still moving at the same speed. So if you like play with some of the settings in polyrhythm mode, the hands might be at different points, but they're all still moving at the same speed around the circle. And we can resync those. a little bit. So pretty important distinction there. can make very different sounds depending on how you switch this up. I personally have gotten better results mostly with the polymeter setting, but try them out. They're both really cool. Cool. So this, that's a lot of kind of the basics here. We have a bunch of presets, so you can like save them presets and switch between them. However, the big issue is that as of right now, these are all sending out one note at a time, which works great for percussion. So if you have a drum rack over here with a bunch of like hi-hats and cymbals and things like that, this is a super cool way to get some like really cool off-time, off-kilter, off interesting percussion. However, with something like this, this wavetable, we're only getting three notes. So it gets a little boring and then it gets a little repetitive. However, this also has a built-in sequencer right here. I'm just going to open up this whole area. So we have sequencers for each one of our different sequences that we're using. So I'm going to go out, turn B and C off, and we're just going to be left with A. And so now as I play this, as it goes through these different notes, let's do something like five notes, uh, it's going to play different notes. Like that. On top of that, we also have a built-in scale mode. So if I want to be in, say, the key of G minor, now it's only playing notes in G minor really cool. We can also do things like randomize it. We can pitch the octave up and down. You can manually change notes if you want to. And then let's go to B. We'll turn B on. Do the same thing. I'll set this also to G minor. So I hit the shuffle button a few times. Do like four sevenths. Rotate it once, and then let's get two of these happen at the same time. Get some like pretty cool sounds. Do this up a little bit. We can tweak our synthesizer a little bit. We're getting some pretty cool results. Let's turn on C, turn on the scale button. Also set this to be something like G minor. So now I'm getting some like cool results with like very, very little effort. And that is really kind of the magic in uh, both in this sequencer and any device that I've been using a lot recently where it's just like, is it simple? Is it easy? Is it fun? Does it generate cool stuff for me without a lot of work? This checks all those boxes right off the bat.
So now that I've done that, um, I can also sequence other things here. I can change the velocity of each one of these notes. I can change the note duration for each one, change the probability of each note happening. So I can have some notes happen not all, every single time. And we also have a parameter option over here, which allows me to map any parameter I want, just like with like the LFO device or something like that. So you could use this to create polyrhythmic or polymetered automation, which I think is something that I might do in a separate video because it's a, a big topic that I think has a lot of really interesting potential that I want to explore some more. Um, but sequencing here looks great, really easy to use, and allows me to just generate notes, keep things in key if I want, and you know, I can shift this around. Uh, you'll notice that like I can't manually change the steps here. So it'll when you change the number of events, that's going to change how many of these notes you get in there. Same thing with the steps here. I change that, changes how many notes you get over there. Uh, so yeah, that's that's the uh, sequencer. It's really cool. And we'll pitch this down an octave. Really fun, really easy. I like it a lot. On top of that, go ahead and turn these guys off. Uh, we have a few extra controls here, kind of in the corner of our circle area. Uh, we have a random option. This is going to allow us to basically randomize different parameters for each one of our sequences, which is pretty cool. And then we also have another built-in arpeggiator over here. So right now, with the arpeggiator turned off, it sounds like just the sequence A sounds like this. If I turn this on, I can start adding arpeggiations. It'll shift it between different octaves. Or different semitones if I want. So you add like another layer of arpeggiation on there. And you can turn them on and off independently. Cool, which sounds great. I love that. Uh, so yeah, tons and tons of features in here, tons of options for just generating lots of melodic elements and creating these interesting sounds where, where things are like not always exactly on time or they're like having they're like the relationship between all the sequences changes over time, which I love. Um, so a couple of things we can do here real quick. Number one, if I wanted to say like record this MIDI, I could have another empty MIDI track over here. And in the MIDI from, I'm gonna grab MIDI from Wavetable, post effects, and now if I hit the record button, There's that sequence, and then I can like pick part of it. I can loop it. I can delete notes. I can move them around. Really easy to to play around with it to create some cool sounds that way. Uh, lastly, if you buy the pro version of the Euclidean sequencer, you also get this Euclidean out option. It's really cool. So this is an extra max delay device that allows you basically to route the MIDI out of each one of your sequences individually to separate tracks. So if we were to go over to this track over here grab the Euclid out, I can grab from that wavetable track where the sequencer is, select the sequencer pro, and I could take the sequence of say B and then send it to this track. So if I want that to be played by say like a piano, turn this guy off. So now it's just receiving from B, even though it's on this other track. Or it's B and C. So you could have one Euclidean sequencer sitting on one track and then have four separate tracks with different instruments on them, all receiving from different sequences from your one Euclidean sequencer pro. So you could use this as the brain to control multiple instruments all at the same time, which I love. Uh, so that's kind of it um, for the most part. There's a few other kind of like little features in here that are worth exploring, um, but I think that that hopefully should give you a basic understanding of how this all works. Uh, I also want to do mention Swing. These all have swing controls, which I love. Which, yeah, puts things a little farther off the grid, which is also really amazing. Um, but yeah, that, that's kind of the Euclidean Sequencer Pro in a nutshell. Fantastic device, really well designed. Uh, I love the interface, it looks really pretty. Um, you can even click on this guy and open it up kind of as like a third party plugin looking thing. Uh, so you can move that around and see it. Uh, I'm a big fan. Go download it, go check it out. Let me know what you think in the comment section below. Fantastic device for just generating all kinds of content, whether it's arpeggiations, melodies, percussion, polyrhythms, polymeters, 
really fun, really easy. Just I, I can't speak highly of this uh, device enough. I'm going to be using this quite a bit in the future, and I've been using it for quite a bit already. So that's it. Hopefully you enjoyed watching that, uh, and thanks for joining me, and hopefully I will see you again soon.